everyone, and welcome to At Home with the Bay. My name is Cindy Willems, and I'm the Director of Education for the Galveston Bay Foundation. We are so excited to bring you this series of virtual field trips. Each video will include virtual labs and field trip activities, a conservation craft, talks with bay biologists, and an outside activity that you can safely participate with. Today's topic is plankton. You've heard about this guy, but how much do you really know? Keep watching to find out more. Hi, my name is Mariah. And I'm Brooke. Today we are at Galveston Bay Foundation's Trinity Bay Discovery Center. I want to tell you about a really unique organism that lives in the water. It's called plankton and they are tiny beings that float along the surface of the water, allowing tides and currents to determine where they go. Today we're going to observe these organisms under a microscope, but first we have to go get them. You ready? Yeah, let's go. This is a plankton net, and this is how we're going to retrieve plankton from the water. This is the towing line, and it's used to drag the net through the water. This part is the nylon mesh netting that filter plankton into the bottle. It's shaped like a funnel. This helps to successfully capture plankton of different sizes into the mesh net. This bottle is where the plankton sample is safely stored until we view them under the microscope. So now we're gonna go throw the plankton net into the water. Let's go see what we get. Now that we've collected our plankton, let's go identify what types we found. All right, so we're all set up here to look at plankton underneath the microscopes. You got any questions before we start? Yeah, what kind of plankton are there? That's a really good question. So there's two main types of plankton. One of them is phytoplankton, which are plant-like organisms, and the other is zooplankton, which are animal-like organisms. Phytoplankton are producers, which means they make their own food using the energy from the sun through a process called photosynthesis. Zooplankton may either be holoplankton or meroplankton. Pretty big words, huh? The way I like to remember it is that some zooplankton will live their whole lives as tiny plankton, they're called holoplankton. Other zooplankton will be plankton for a mere percentage of their life. They're called meroplankton. They will eventually grow to be bigger animals, such as jellyfish, crabs, and shrimp. Plankton come in all different shapes and patterns. Some plankton have a whip-like tail called flagella that helps them propel through the water. Others have cilia, which are short hair-like structures all around their bodies that they use to move and catch food. Some even have spines that help keep them afloat or act as protection. This plankton looks like it has that whip-like tail called flagella that we talked about earlier. It has a flat leaf-shaped structure and is usually green in color, but it's kind of hard to see here. The one that is moving looks like a diatom, which is a type of phytoplankton. They have a glass outer shell that protects them. You can also see that it's green in color this is because they have chloroplasts that capture energy from the sun, which is a part of how they make their food. We hope you enjoyed today's lab with us. Now you're going to learn more about phytoplankton with our bay biologists coming up next. Hi, my name is Dr. Jamie Steichen, and I'm a research scientist at Texas A&M University at Galveston. My main research focus looks at phytoplankton in Galveston Bay. I'm looking forward to talking with you today about phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are beautiful single cell organisms that function like plants, except they are microscopic and live in the water. Even though they are so tiny, they photosynthesize just like land plants and trees. A few water types that they can be found in are oceans, seas, lakes, and estuaries. 
In just one drop of water, there can be thousands, even millions of phytoplankton. People like to give all the credit to trees and other land plants for the oxygen we breathe, but these tiny cells produce over half of the oxygen on the planet. Let's pause for a moment and take a deep breath. Half of the oxygen that you breathed in was produced by phytoplankton. So if you haven't thanked the phytoplankton today, you probably should. Phytoplankton are important in any aquatic ecosystem because they are at the base of the food web and many other animals depend on them for their growth and survival. Phytoplankton needs sunlight, water, and nutrients to grow. This means that the phytoplankton are only going to grow as deep as the sunlight can go into the water. If they receive too much nutrition, they can grow really quickly and they can cause algal blooms. Sometimes there are toxic species of phytoplankton that can also grow really quickly. This creates a harmful algal bloom and may result in fish and other animals becoming sick. Not all blooms are bad. There are also natural algal blooms that occur with the changing of the seasons, mainly in the spring and fall. When the temperatures in the air change, this also changes the temperature in the water, which causes the waters to mix, bringing nutrients to the surface where the phytoplankton live. This is good because then the zooplankton and small fish have a lot of phytoplankton to eat and that helps them grow. Phytoplankton can even provide nutrients and food for humans. They produce a sticky substance that is used to make ice cream and even gummy snacks. Another cool fact about phytoplankton is that some species can produce bioluminescence. This means that they produce light in the water that makes it look like the waves are glowing blue. Sometimes we even have those species here in Galveston Bay and in the Gulf of Mexico. Phytoplankton, even though they're tiny, they do some pretty big things. Hi, for today's conservation craft, we're going to make models of plankton using things that we found around the house. For this craft, you will need recycled items, craft paper, and scissors. You may also want pipe cleaners and yarn. You'll want to use glue or tape. And then it's also helpful if you have some pictures of what plankton look like for reference. Make sure you have a dot to help you with the hot glue gun. Okay, once you have your materials, that's when the fun begins and you get to be creative. You can make your model based on an actual plankton or you can create your own. Remember, plankton come in all different shapes and have different features. Some plankton are round and some are in long strands. Some have flagella, cilia, and even spines. And there's even some plankton that are surrounded with a shell that looks like buttons. Some have green chlorophyll inside to help make food through photosynthesis. It's all up to you how you create your plankton model. Just remember to have fun. Are y'all ready? Yeah! All right, girls, now it's time to share our plankton. What features did your plankton have? Chlorophyll to help produce food using photosynthesis. It has a flagella to help it move, and it has long, sticky threads to help ca capture more food. My plankton. plankton has cilia to help it move, and flagella to help it um, swim fast to catch its food. <laughs> what about you? What type of features did you put on your plankton? What type of plankton did you make? Hi, I'm Megan, and this is Lily. Here are some things that you can do at home to help keep a healthy balance of plankton in the bay. The first thing you can do is to pick up after your pets. Pet waste or poop left in our yards, the park, can eventually wash into the bay and that bacteria is harmful for fish, humans, or even plankton. The second thing you can do is limit the amount of fertilizer you use in your plants or on your lawn. Too much fertilizer makes plankton grow, and too much plankton in the bay can actually be harmful for fish as well. The third thing you can do at home is to limit the amount of pesticides or herbicides you use. Pesticides and herbicides 
kill bugs or weeds, but they can also be harmful to fish or plankton. When it rains, this could potentially flow to the bay. So choose one thing you can do this week to help keep plankton healthy in the bay. That was a lot of fun. Today we looked at different types of plankton under a microscope with Mariah. And Dr. Steichen taught us all about phytoplankton in Galveston Bay. We also made our own plankton models. And learned from Megan how we can keep plankton healthy by doing our own part at home. Thanks for watching At Home with the Bay. We'll see you next time.